Hi guys, Matt here from the Traveling Together Journal. Today I'm going to share with you my new solar generator. This is the Bluetti AC200P, and it's going to be the heart of the electrical system in my new Overland Camper build. I hadn't really decided what electrical components I wanted for the new camper when Bluetti reached out to me, but after looking at some of the technical specs and reviews online for some of their larger solar generators, I got pretty excited about the AC200P, and Bluetti agreed to send me a unit to try out. Solar generators are devices that allow you to input electrical power, store it in a battery, and then use it when needed. There are many solar generators on the market, and they all generally consist of a charge controller, a battery, an inverter, and a variety of input and output ports. The capabilities of the various solar generators are dictated by the size and quality of each of these components. The first thing that stood out to me about the AC200P was its battery. Its 2000 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery is the perfect size for my electrical demands, including a fridge freezer, fans, lights, and charging various devices like cameras and phones. The lithium iron phosphate technology is more stable than lithium ion batteries, making it safer and giving it a much longer life cycle, as well as better long term storage characteristics. Compared to lead acid batteries, Lithium iron phosphate can store the same amount of usable power in a smaller, lighter package and offer two to four times more discharge cycles over its lifespan. The one main disadvantage of lithium iron phosphate is that charging the battery at a temperature less than 32 degrees Fahrenheit will cause significant damage to the batteries. So, if you plan on traveling in very cold places, you will want to keep your solar generator somewhere with a regulated temperature. On the plus side, the Bluetti AC200P does have a built-in failsafe that will not allow you to charge the unit if it is too cold, so you don't have to worry about accidentally killing your batteries in this way. You can, however, continue to use the power in the AC200P to power devices even in sub-freezing temperatures. The AC200P is built with a modern, efficient MPPT charge controller that can handle up to 700 watts of power from your solar array or be used to charge the AC200P from a 12 volt or 24 volt vehicle electrical system through the dedicated port on the side of the unit. I anticipate solar being my primary power source, but the AC200P is also very capable of accepting AC power, like from the outlet at your home or an RV park. The AC200P can be charged with up to 400 watts of AC power, and it can accept AC and DC power simultaneously. So if you have 700 watts from your solar array and 400 watts from AC power, you could theoretically recharge the AC200P from zero in about two and a half hours. And this solar generator gives us a lot of options on how to use that power. The AC200P comes with an impressive pure sine wave inverter that can provide you with 2000 watts of AC power with a peak surge power of 4800 watts. And you have six 120 volt 20 amp outlets to draw that power from. I like having the option of using AC power if I need it, but most of my power draw will be from the DC outlets. We get four USB-A ports, a USB-C port, a 12 volt cigarette lighter style outlet, two 5.5 millimeter outlets, a 12 volt 25 amp RV style outlet, and two wireless charging pads. The USB ports will satisfy most of my charging needs, but it's nice to have the other options for devices that come with different chargers or when I'm trying to charge all of my devices while hooked up to an AC power source. And the 12 volt 25 amp RV outlet will provide power to the camper. 25 amps at 12 volt should be plenty of power for my fridge, fans, and lights to all be turned on at the same time without worry. After seeing all the features the AC200P has to offer, I was pretty excited to get mine and give it a try. The unit arrived in some heavy packaging, which was a good thing because it looked like the UPS guy had rolled it out of the back of the truck and left it upside down in front of the house. Inside the box, we got our warranty card and user manual and the power brick. This is for charging from AC power. And then we also got this little carry bag here. And inside the bag, We've got a bunch of cables with a nifty little Velcro strap on them. We get cable for charging from solar panels, a cable for charging from your vehicle, 
and a cable from charging AC power that would hook through the power brick there. And then we have a cable that will hook into either the solar or the vehicle charging cable and then hook up to the AC 200P. Despite the rough handling from the delivery guy, the AC 200P fired right up. And I followed the instructions to set it up, which just involved setting the time and date on the easy to read touchscreen display. It arrived with a 70% charge, so I plugged it into the wall outlet and quickly got it up to 100%. With the battery topped off, I plugged in a 12 volt fan, turned on the DC outlets, and cranked the fan up to max speed. By clicking on the DC load icon on the touchscreen, we can watch the power draw from the fan increase from 17 watts to 27 to 41 watts as I cycle through the three speed settings on the fan. I went through a discharge and charge cycle with one fan and then used an adapter for the 5.5 millimeter outlet to run my second fan for a combined load of 69 watts and did another discharge and charge cycle. This isn't the most rigorous or scientific test but it simulates the low, consistent DC load I will be putting on the unit. Everything worked as expected. The Blue Eddy AC200P is designed to withhold 10% of its 2000 watt battery bank to prolong the life cycle of the battery. So your usable power supply is really 1800 watts. And the percent shown on the touchscreen is based on this usable amount of power. With two fans consuming 69 watts an hour, the AC200P powered them for 24 hours, 15 minutes. This comes out to 1,673 watts of power consumption. That leaves us with 127 watts unaccounted for. Presumably the solar generator consumed this power for its internal operations of cooling fans and the backlit touchscreen, etc. 127 watts sounded like a lot at first, but over 24.25 hours, it comes out to only 5.2 watts or 0.4 amps an hour, which seems pretty reasonable. I charged the unit back up to 100% and left it off for 12 days. And when I turned it back on, it showed no measurable power loss. My takeaway from these initial tests is that the AC200P doesn't lose noticeable power while off, but it will consume about 5.2 watts an hour with the DC outlets turned on. So if you are just using the unit to power lights and charge things around camp for about three hours each day, it will only consume 15.6 watts a day. But if you are like me and you plan to leave it on to power a fridge 24 seven, then you can expect a daily consumption of 125 watts. Depending on how you plan to use your solar generator, this may be something to factor in as you choose a unit that meets your needs. When it comes to physical dimensions, the Blue Eddy AC200P comes as advertised at 16.5 by 11 by 15.2 inches. And my scale weighs it at 60 pounds instead of the advertised 60.6 pounds. To give all of this information some context, I compared the AC200P to the components we used during our one and a half year overland trip through Mexico and Central America. In that system, we used two AGM batteries, a quality MPPT charge controller, and a small AC inverter. The AGM batteries had a combined storage of 1,800 watt hours, but in order to prolong the life cycle of the AGM batteries, we could only use 50% of that stored power, instead of the 90% we can use with the lithium iron phosphate battery in the AC200P. So our usable power storage was only 900 watt hours compared to the 1,800 watt hours in our new solar generator. The AC inverter we carried had a lower capacity and fewer outlets, but was sufficient for our needs. And our old MPPT charge controller efficiently handled the amount of solar we carry just as well as the new one will in the AC200P. Our old components combined take up a similar amount of space as the AC200P, but having the components separate does offer the advantage of being able to get creative with how you mount each component to fit your space. According to my home scale, the AC200P weighs 60 pounds, while my old battery inverter and charge controller weigh 126.6 pounds. So both systems take up a similar amount of space, but the AC200P offers double the usable power storage and weighs less than half of what my old system weighed. 
So I'm definitely excited about our Blue Eddy AC200P. I think it's going to be a great upgrade for my new camper build. Click the link in the description box below and use the discount code for $100 off of your Blue Eddy AC200P. Subscribe and keep an eye out for more of my camper build series. Eventually I will be mounting the solar generator in my truck and giving it a proper durability test. Until next time, thanks for watching.